good morning guys and welcome back to my channel so today I'm gonna to go through with you and do a Lalabo fragrance sample unboxing and first impressions so Lalabo is a company I'm very very limited with my exposure to I've only ever tried Santal 33 and I have not tried any of the other ones and I would really love to have a Lalabo fragrance in my perfume collection so today we're gonna to go through and sniff them together I have 11 samples to share with you and I've waited until I could film to share with you guys my first impressions so if this is your first time on my channel thank you so much for stopping by my name is Alithia and on this channel we talk mostly about perfume so if that is your thing make sure to head on down and hit the subscribe button also feel free to head over and follow me on Instagram if you like photos of home decor minimalism decluttering just pretty home decor objects and of course a whole bunch of perfume related content I would love to see you over there and also let me know down below before we get started if you have a favorite Lalabo fragrance and with that let's get into today's video okay guys so I'm really excited because I got a parcel in the mail from Lalabo today and I've been waiting for this for a few days I ordered it about a week ago and I'm really really excited to open it and usually when I get a new perfume or new samples of perfumes I like to kind of sit down and take my time with them and it's like a whole ritual for me I get candles lit I make coffee or tea and I kind of like set myself up and sniff perfumes and it's kind of like a just super relaxing enjoyable thing for me to do um, but I wanted to take you guys along with me and share my first impressions of all of these fragrances with you because I know a lot of people are really interested in Lalabo and I think it's just a really fun enjoyable thing to do and so this is the packaging that it came in I really appreciate that it is not a plastic bubble mailer I like that it is a environmentally friendly um, package and you can see there came from Lalabo so I do have my phone with me here so that I can look up uh, notes. I have a candle lit. This is just a candle from Glade, which probably, let's be honest, I don't live near any better place to get candles. So this is from Walmart. <laughs> you guys, this is why I do a lot of blind buying because I just live so far away from like proper shopping. But anyway, this is a vanilla cashmere or something candle, but I do really like it and I'm going through it pretty fast. It's really nice. And then I also have some flowers here that are from HomeSense, which I've had for the longest time and I just love them. I have like an addiction to flowers. Every time I'm at HomeSense, I have to buy flowers. And then I have my little mason jar with my tester strips which i will link these down below for you guys because people always ask where i got my super cute tester strips from and then i just have a little rose quartz tea light candle holder which i don't actually ever use i just like having rose quartz in my living room and then i have my coffee which is now unfortunately getting cold and my cup i know really needs to be cleaned and then i also have a pen so that i can write down on my tester strips the names of the perfumes and that is about it i'm literally in my pajamas you guys this is gonna be super chill super relaxed and a little bit different from what i usually do so yeah let's open this together and see what samples i have i don't even remember which fragrances i ordered i'm pretty sure i ordered um all of the most popular ones except santal 33 i don't think All right, so this is what they look like when they come out of the package. I just love the packaging of this, you guys. How cute is it? Um, so yeah, looks like, I don't know if this is like trying to be more sustainable or if it's just their branding, but I really, really like the packaging and I like how it's in like this cardboard. So we have Vini 44. And by the way, you guys, I've never smelled any Lalabo fragrances before at all, except for Santal 33, which like I say, I wasn't a huge fan of. So we have Vini 44. We have Jasmine 17. Um, this doesn't have a name on it. Oh, um, this is another 13. So this one I've heard really good things about actually, and the reviews on this one are really good. So I'm very, very excited for this one. And I should tell you as well, um, that my goal for this is I would love to find a Lalabo that I'm in love with. I would love to find a Lalabo fragrance to bring into my collection. So I'm really, really hoping that one of these scents here is like a love for me. We also have Gaiac 10. I think that's how you pronounce it as Gaiac 10. Look at how cute these are. I just love them. Um, we have Mousse de Chenet. 
I hope I'm saying that properly, Mousse de Chine 30. We have Tabac 28, and this one I thought I would try because I just thought it sounded interesting. I don't really know if it's very popular or not. Haven't heard anything about that one. Um, and then we also have Sear, or I, I don't know if this is pronounced Sear 28. Could be Queer 28, which I think means leather, but I don't know. Does it have the notes on here? It just has the ingredients. It doesn't have the notes, so we'll have to look up the notes together. And then we have ben Benjoin 19. I don't know if I'm saying that properly. Is it supposed to be Benzoin 19? And we have, oh, I did order Santel 33. So apparently I wanted to experience Santel 33 again. Maybe I'll like it better this time than I have in previous times. And we also have Iris 39. You guys know that I'm a huge fan of Iris, so maybe I will like that one. And we have Ambrette 9. And again, I'm a huge, huge fan of Ambrette. Love Ambrette. So I'm going to start off with the ones that I know the least about and have heard the least about. And I'm pretty much just going to start writing the names on the strips. And then we're going to go ahead and start spraying them together. Okay, so I have all the names of the perfumes written down on these little tester strips and I'm just gonna, I think, start at the bottom and the ones that I have kind of the highest hopes for, I'm gonna leave for last, which would be another 13, the Vanille 44. I have pretty high hopes for Vanille 44. And other than that, I think we can just start in any, in any place. So we're gonna start off with Benjoin 19, and I don't know if I'm saying that properly again, you guys, but this is what the package looks like. And then you've got your little sample inside. And for people who are wondering, I just ordered this directly from the Lalaba website, and they did ship to Canada, obviously, and it took a little over a week, I would say, to get here from the Lalaba website. Okay, Benjoin 19. Hmm, okay. It's pretty woody. I think there's leather in here too, maybe. This one's okay, I'm not absolutely loving it. I think it's a little bit masculine and it's pretty woody and kind of leathery. And I think there's like maybe some vanilla or benzoin or something. It's a little bit animalic, if I'm being honest. So I'm not 100% loving this one. Yeah, this one I don't 100% love. Um, yeah, so that's okay. Yeah, I think I think there must be some leather and woody notes in here, and I don't 100% love that one. It's okay. Like, for myself personally, I'd probably rate it just from my own personal perspective, not that it's not a great fragrance, because I'm sure lots of people probably really like it, but I would probably rate this one like a 4 out of 10 maybe. It's not bad, but I definitely would not wear this, so Benjoin 19 is a miss for me. Okay, the next one is this Sear 28 or Queer 28. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. And I'm guessing this one is gonna have leather because I think that's what that stands for. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, I don't like this at all. This is very, very masculine and very leathery and very animalic. Yep, I don't like this in the slightest. Nope. <laughs> this, I give it like a one out of 10. Yeah, this is like totally not my kind of scent and definitely no, 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 no. <laughs> nope, <laughs> that one's not working. So that is Sear or Queer 28 Leather, Leather 28. Nope, not for me. So we're gonna go ahead and experience Santal 33 again, which I haven't smelt in a really long time. And the last time I smelt this one was, I think probably like, I don't know, eight months ago, like almost a year ago probably actually. So my tastes have changed a little bit since then, so maybe I will like it better. This is a pretty popular one. I would say this is one of their more popular ones and um, it's a very woody fragrance, like a sandalwood fragrance. So let's see. Hmm, I can smell it from here. This is really nice. So Santel 33 is really nice. 
Um, it's a very woody, sandal woody fragrance, and actually it reminds me a little bit of Gris Charnel. It reminds me a lot of Gris Charnel, which I like. I really like Gris Charnel. Um, but this one isn't as powdery. This one's maybe a little bit more woody, not so powdery like Gris Charnel is, but very, very similar. And this also smells a lot like um, Maison Louis Marie Bois de Balancourt, Bois, number four Bois de Balancourt, which I actually bought a bottle of and I'm returning it because it's too woody for me. And if you look on Fragrantica, everybody says that Bois de Balancourt smells like Le Labo Santel 33, and they're right, it does. It's nice, but I do think it's probably too masculine for me. Like, I'm starting to realize, even with my Gris Charnel, that that's probably too masculine for me and I appreciate it more on my boyfriend than on myself and this is one of those fragrances like it's a beautiful scent but I really I really don't think I don't think I would ever wear it except to layer um, people ask me all the time my thoughts on on Santal 33 and yeah I don't think I would ever buy a bottle of this for myself it's just I mean never say never it's a beautiful fragrance but yeah. So this one, Santal 33 for myself, I probably would give something like a six out of 10 because I don't really, really like it or love it, but I don't dislike it. It's a good fragrance. So for myself, I would say Santal 33, six out of 10 for myself. Sprayer doesn't want to spray for some reason. Okay. So this is the Tabac 28 and the sprayer doesn't want to spray on this one for some reason, but I got a little bit on there. So hopefully that's enough to tell if I like it or not. Hmm. I wish the sprayer was working. That's actually really nice. I'm going to see if I can get it to spray a little bit better. So I broke it. <laughs> I broke it while I was trying to get it to spray. So that's really unfortunate. I like this one. This is really nice. I would say this is, I think they're all designed for unisex if I'm not wrong, but I would say this is unisex and it's a really nice, like sweet, light tobacco. Mm, I really like the way this smells. I don't know if I'd wear it for myself because I don't like smelling like tobacco. Usually, like I don't like a strong tobacco scent, but this is really, really pleasant. Yeah, I like the way this smells. I think I like this better for a candle or something though, but I would rate this about a six out of 10 for myself. So now we're getting more into, I think, I hope the more feminine fragrances. We have Jasmine, Ambrette, Iris, Mousse de Chine, Gaïc 10, Another 13, and Vinny 44. So here's hoping that I find a really nice feminine fragrance. So this one is Jasmine 17. Mmm, that's very pretty. Very, very, very pretty. Very floral. Mm, what else am I smelling in here? Hmm. Is there neroli or something in here? There's something, there's gotta be some other white flowers in here, I think. I'm almost getting like neroli or, yeah, this is nice. It's actually a little bit giving me Love Don't Be Shy vibes a little bit. That's why I'm saying that I think there's neroli or something. I really like this actually. Very, very feminine, very pretty. A little bit tropical smelling, a little bit sweet. That one's very, very pleasant. I really like this one so far. Mm, I really, really like this. So this is very feminine, very sweet, a little bit kind of bubble gummy, like, um, like that neroli orange blossom type of thing. And for myself, I honestly think I would give this, I would give this like a 7.5. This is pretty good. And for me, if a perfume is like an eight out of 10, that's really, really good. So I definitely like this a lot more than the Santal and the leather one, 100%. Yeah, this is very, very pleasant. Um, I'll give it a 7.5. So that is the Jasmine 17. So this one is the Ambrette 9. And I'm hoping I really like this one. Hmm. It's very soft. It's very soft and a little bit woody. It's very, very faint. I don't think I would wear this one by itself. This smells like it would be a really good layering scent. Hmm. 
interesting. So I don't actually know what Ambrette just by itself smells like. I just know what it smells like from smelling it in other perfumes and reading about it online. And it smells pretty much like I would expect. Um, but I don't know if they put anything else in there. This is like subtly sweet and a little musky and a little bit woody and very, very soft. Like this one I think would be a great layering fragrance, like I said, but I don't think I would ever wear this by itself. Although I think if you did, it would just have, it would just give you that certain sense about you. Like you smell clean and musky and good and feminine, but not necessarily like you were wearing a perfume. So yeah, this is definitely the lightest out of all the ones I've smelled so far and it's neither a love nor a dislike. It's just kind of very, very neutral. I don't really have an opinion on this one, whether I, you know, like it or don't like it. Um, so I'm going to give it a five. Okay. So now we have Iris 39 and I usually like Iris. Iris is a very powdery fragrance, powdery scent. I can smell it from here. It's actually pretty strong and Hmm. This is different. Hmm. Okay. I'm not sure what I'm smelling in here, but this is not what I would have thought. I can actually taste it. <laughs> it's quite strong and it's really filling the air around me quite a lot. It is very powdery, but there's almost something, there's almost something sharp in here that I don't like. I don't know what that sharpness is, but there's almost something almost medicinal in here. I'm getting like eucalyptus oil or something like it's very, yeah. Or tea tree oil. It smells like tea tree oil to me. I don't care for this. No, I do not care for this. This is like, this is straight up like essential oils to me. So, um, yeah, I thought this was going to be like a powdery lipsticky makeup-y cosmetic smell and it's totally nothing. By the way, I haven't looked at the notes again, so I'm just going based on the name, but yeah, I don't, I don't really care for this at all. So that is Iris 39. This one is not quite as bad as the leather one. I would say it's a notch above the leather one. So I'm gonna give this one a two out of 10. Iris 39, two out of 10. So back to one of the ones I have high hopes for, Mousse de Chenet 30. And the reason I have high hopes for it is because it sounds like it might be gourmand or creamy, even though I don't know what Mousse de Chenet stands for. I feel like this one might be creamy and gourmand, I hope. I could be totally wrong. I can smell something already. It's quite, it's pleasant. Hmm. Hmm. I really like that. Hmm. <laughs> I like this one a lot. Oh, I really like this one a lot. This is, um, it's woody, but sweet at the same time. It's got like a woody sweetness to it. I'm really curious to see what the notes are in here. I might have to look them up. I, I wasn't really curious about the notes in the other ones because I kind of could figure out what was going on. Um, but this one has me really intrigued because this one smells almost like a dessert, but it also, it also smells very woody. Interesting. So it smells completely different than what I would have guessed. So there's oak moss, patchouli, pink pepper, woody notes, West Indian Bay, and cinnamon. So I don't know where I'm getting that sweetness from, but it really does have like a... A sweet dessert like quality to me interesting and it's classified as a woody earthy mossy patchouli warm spicy soft spicy that is insane because I totally thought there would have been something gourmand in here probably a 6.5 I don't like it as much as the jasmine and I don't know mm. It's very unique and very different and very beautiful. So I don't know if I would wa want to wear this myself. I don't know if I would buy a bottle, but I will give this one a 6.5. Okay, we are on our third last one, and this is Gaiac 10. And Gaiac, I believe, is a type of wood, if I'm not mistaken. Like, I'm not an expert on these notes by any means, you guys, but I'm thinking this will be a woody fragrance. They all seem to be kind of woody. Hmm. Okay, that's different. Interesting. This one's a little bit, a little bit kind of dirty, animalic, woody to me. Yeah, I don't think I like this. This one for me is kind of like the leather one and the Benjoin one. Yeah, I don't like this at all. This to me smells very, very antique, like kind of dirty, animalic, antique wood. I don't like this. I can appreciate it. I mean, I think that the Lalaba fragrances are really masterful and incredible fragrances, and I think that they've done a really good job with them. I can appreciate this, what this is, but I don't like that for myself. No, 
I wouldn't wear that one at all. So that one is Gaiac 10. The name, I feel like, I feel like I would like it just from the name. Like it, you know, it looks like such an interesting, you know, it just looks like an interesting, cool fragrance, but it's, it's definitely not one I can wear. So second last, you guys, we're gonna do Vini 44. And my impression so far is that most of them are very masculine, they're very unique. They're not safe blind buys at all. Um, there's a couple that I like, but none that are loves so far. And I'm a vanilla fan, so I'm hoping that this is a feminine vanilla fragrance and that it's not like some strange animalic take on vanilla because I'm kind of worried about that at this point. Um, but yeah, this is my second last one. So if it does, if I don't like this one or the last one, then I really haven't found a winner yet, except the Jasmine one was nice. So if you guys have any recommendations for um, Lo Labo fragrances that you think I would like, please let me know, but I'm going to go ahead and spray the vanilla one. Okay, please don't be weird and animalic. Please be good. <laughs> mm, it's nice. Again, pretty unisex. Maybe a little spicy too. It is kind of a woody, woody, spicy vanilla. It's not bad, but it's really reminding me of the type of vanilla you might find in a store that you would go into to buy essential oils for your essential oil diffuser. It like it's giving me yeah, I don't know. There's something different in here that I don't love. So I was, I was right. It's not a vanilla like not the vanilla I was expecting. It's definitely very unique, very different, not a safe blind buy vanilla for sure. It might be better on skin, but this is still pretty masculine for me. And this smells again, more like a candle to me than a fragrance. So I'm not really loving this one. Yeah, this is just, this is just like not that great to me. I would give this one somewhere below five for sure. This is probably like a three, or a four, not in love with it. That is the vanilla 44. Okay, so we are moving on to our last one, another 13. And this one I have the highest hopes for. I have seen the best good reviews from this one. And actually, um, Erin Nicole from Erin Nicole TV has this one and she really likes it. And she and I have, uh oh, please work. She and I have pretty similar um, taste. For some reason, it doesn't really want to spray. Well, that's okay. I think I got enough on there to get a taste of it. Okay, another 13. Hmm. So this one is probably the most pleasant and feminine one out of the batch, besides the Jasmine 17. It's a little bit sweet. It's very unique and a little bit sweet, and I can't really put my finger on what any of the notes are, honestly. I want to say that it might be a little bit resinous maybe. It's kind of has that same quality that Baccarat Rouge has. I hate having to bring that perfume up all the time and I hate comparing to that one, but it has that kind of luminosity to it. It's very difficult to explain. It has like this sweetness to it, this like light airy sweetness that I don't even know how to describe. I think I like this one, but this one I would have to play around with and put it on my skin for sure. It's very light, but I have a feeling it's one of those perfumes that would hang around for a while and people could probably pick it up on you even if it smelled kind of light to yourself. This one I actually would probably give like a 7.5 to an 8. So I put the another 13 on my arm and on my arm it smells like, it's very, very hard to describe. It's a little bit kind of woody and resinous. It almost smells like burnt sugar on my skin. Um, I haven't looked at the notes. I haven't looked up to see what people say it smells like, but it does have that similar thing that Baccarat Rouge has, which is that it smells very natural and very high quality, but almost a little bit like burnt sugar. And it doesn't smell the same as Baccarat Rouge 540, don't get me wrong, but like, I feel like if you like Baccarat Rouge 540, you'd probably like this one. So another 13 is so far my favorite one for sure. And probably one of the only ones I'll continue to play around with. Okay, so let's quickly recap them. I have them all sitting here on the side of the table along with their respective packaging, including the one I broke. So Benjoin 19, it's not bad, it's very woody. 
but I don't think I'd wear it myself. Ugh, this one I don't like at all. This one actually makes me a little bit nauseated. That is the Queer 28, which I think means leather. Santel 33 is quite a nice um, sandalwood fragrance. It reminds me a little bit of Gris Charnel, but again, I think that one's a little bit too masculine for me, so I don't know that I would wear that one, but it's worth keeping the sample and playing around with it because so many people seem to love it. The Tabac 28, that one is a really nice, um, kind of a sweet tobacco. It's a very soft, palatable tobacco. But again, I think it would be better for a candle than for myself. The Jasmine 17, now this one I did like. It might be a little bit strong for me. I would worry that this one might give me a bit of a headache, to be honest. It's very pretty. Actually, this would be a great bridal scent. And I think there must be a bunch of other white flowers in here as well, not just Jasmine, but that's a very, very pretty one. The Ambret 9 was the one that I'm kind of neutral about because I basically couldn't even smell it. The Iris 39, that one I really didn't like. That was like a very strange, almost medicinal take on a powdery iris, so that one did not work out for me. The Mousse de Chenet, now this one was the one that had all of the kind of woody, patchouli, moss notes. Now that it's had a chance to dry down, this is actually smelling quite mossy almost a little bit sweet but that's kind of what this one is smelling like so that one's okay but again i don't think i would wear that one and then we have the gaiac 10 which i didn't even give a number to but i really didn't like it the vanille 44 which i was a little bit disappointed in because it wasn't the vanilla i was hoping it would be and then we have another 13 which is the very unique one yeah that one is really really unique and that one's worth playing around with a little bit. So you guys, that is about it. And to be really honest with you, my impression of Lalabo is that a lot of them are very um, unique unisex very very woody I don't know much about the brand. I haven't really researched the brand, but they're all very natural woody earthy um, I know there's other fragrances than just these, so please let me know if there's other ones that you would recommend that I check out. There definitely was quite a few that I did not get. I know there's Rose 31, I think, and I think that one might have been a good one to get a sample of, but I didn't. But my impression right now is that I wouldn't be able to wear a lot of them. Like, I don't know if that house is a good house for me. I'm, I was really hoping I would find a fragrance in today's samples that worked for me, and the closest I have is another 13, and I still don't even know if that one would actually work for me because it's just very different. It's very different, but yeah, so that is my Lalabo samples. And yeah, please let me know down below if you have a favorite Lalabo and what your thoughts are and if you liked any of these ones. And my two favorites were the Jasmine 17 and the Another 13. So that was it for today's video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed hearing my first impressions on these perfumes. And I will see you guys all very soon in my next video. Bye for now.